A geomagnetic storm occurred in 1859, producing an aurora that could be seen everywhere in Hawaii. It had an impact on the telegraph system. However, some operating systems were said to be able to convey messages even when their batteries weren't plugged in. They were surprisingly only making use of the geomagnetic storm's current. The size of this geomagnetic storm was unprecedented in recorded history. A supersolar strike doesn't happen infrequently and it may occur today and be far worse. It might take more from the world to recover from a solar strike of this magnitude than the top 10 natural disasters in the US put together. What exactly is this event that has the potential to end our civilization? How did we just recently miss this extinction by only nine days? And is there anything we can even do to stop it? Let's find out. The expansion of sunspots on the solar disk in August 1859 captivated the attention of astronomers all across the world. One of them was Richard Carrington, an amateur astronomer from the English town of Redhill close to London. Carrington was drawing the sunspots on September the 1st when he was suddenly dazzled by a burst of light. According to NASA spacecraft, Carrington called it a white light flare. The entire process took around five minutes. A massive coronal mass ejection, CME or flare, is a burst of magnetized plasma that leaves the sun's corona, its upper atmosphere. The CME traveled more than 90 million miles, 150 million kilometers, between the sun and Earth in 17.6 hours before striking Earth with all of its furies. NASA spacecraft claims that it typically takes several days for CMEs to reach Earth. The Earth went through an unusual geomagnetic storm the day after Carrington saw the magnificent flare, causing telegraph systems to go crazy and making auroral displays typically only visible at polar latitudes and viewable in the tropics. Putting two and two together, Carrington concluded that the solar flare he had just witnessed was almost certainly the origin of this significant geomagnetic disturbance. A connection like this has never been formed before. In his honor, the solar storm of 1859 is often referred to as the Carrington event. Space weather is caused by distortions in the magnetic field of the sun, which causes dark spots or sunspots to appear on its surface. These spots can produce solar flares, coronal mass ejections, and other electromagnetic phenomena, which could have dangerous repercussions for our way of life in the technological world. Sunspot activity fluctuates on an 11-year cycle, and the next solar maximum is expected in 2025. So it makes sense to look at the deadliest solar storms right now. What took place at the Carrington event? Technology was severely disrupted by the massive geomagnetic storm caused by the Carrington event. As global telegraph communications broke down, the entire planet went silent. There have been stories of telegraph machines emitting sparks, operators getting electric shocks, and the sparks setting paper on fire. Skywatchers from all over the world were mesmerized by stunning auroras as polar light displays extended far beyond their typical limits. While the southern lights, Aurora Australis, were only seen as far north as Santiago, Chile, the northern lights, Aurora Borealis, were seen as far south as Cuba and Honolulu, Hawaii. Many people throughout the world had never seen an aurora before, so they were unsure of how to interpret the sky's unusual brightness. While some thought the world was ending, others got their day going after hearing the birds sing, seeing the clear skies, and thinking the sun had risen. The Carrington event's impacts were still being felt, and the environment was still quite charged when Telegraph employees went back to work the next day. Employees of the American Telegraph Company were unable to send or receive dispatches. Unsettlingly, they discovered that they could still turn off their batteries and use the auroral current to send messages to Portland, Maine. Although solar storms rarely endanger human life directly, 
there is a chance that they could have an influence on safety-critical systems through electromagnetic impacts, including ground-based electrical power distribution and space-based communications, navigation and weather forecasting. If it occurred now, a storm the size of the Carrington event might bring about an internet apocalypse, taking many people and businesses offline. Due to this, the UK government lists bad space weather as one of the most dangerous natural hazards in its National Risk Register. Businesses have contingency plans in place to handle extreme events, as long as they are given enough notice. According to researchers from Lloyds of London and the Atmospheric and Environmental Research Agency in the US, a Carrington-class catastrophe today would cause between $0.6 and $2.6 trillion in losses to the country alone. For our benefit, solar storms like the Carrington events only occur around once every 500 years. Although they happen more frequently, around every 50 years, solar storms with half the intensity of the Carrington events are more common. However, as space weather is notoriously difficult to forecast, we cannot be confident when the next Carrington-level event will take place. The greatest CMEs can erupt from the Sun at speeds of up to 3,000 km per second and include billions of tons of solar material. The embedded magnetic field in this substance has the potential to interfere with Earth's magnetic field when the two come into contact. We know this has been going on forever because, according to a study published in January 2022, radioactive particles from a strong solar storm that pounded the Earth 9,200 years ago are still present in the ice beneath Greenland. An earlier study from 2020 revealed that strong geomagnetic storms happened much more frequently than previously believed, in 42 of the 150 years before then. NASA spaceflight claims that the Carrington event-like solar storm struck Earth in the year 774 AD. On the other hand, the Earth narrowly avoided being hit by a very strong solar storm 10 years ago. Most of us were clueless, but if the storm had hit us, it might have destroyed electrical infrastructure, cut off power to millions of people for weeks and wreaked havoc. Two massive coronal mass ejections, or bursts of charged plasma, were unleashed by the Sun on July 23, 2012, and they were sent hurtling towards Earth's orbit. One of the strongest periods of space weather in more than 150 years occurred during this time. If such bursts had impacted the Earth's magnetic field, they might have caused powerful ground currents that might have overloaded our electric grids, destroyed transformers and rendered huge regions powerless. Luckily for us, the solar outburst was approximately a week away from Earth and instead struck Stereo A, one of NASA's observational satellites through which we learned about it. But some experts find that to be a little too cosy. We would still be cleaning up the pieces today if it had struck. Space weather aficionados have long expressed concern about the possibility of deadly solar storms. The 2012 eruption was described as a Carrington-level event. In the worst event, a severe solar storm could deprive 20 to 40 million people in the northeast of their electricity for months or perhaps years as utilities fought to replace thousands of worn-out transformers from Boston to Washington, D.C. Good news, we're not completely powerless. As previously mentioned, businesses and government organizations have been developing strategies to deal with disruptive space weather in recent years. These strategies range from hardening power grids to rerouting flights that may be affected by geomagnetic storms. Even so, it's difficult to defend against a very huge storm, and the fact that we're going to lose some important observational satellites doesn't help. What comes to most people's minds is how we might be able to protect ourselves from them and whether or not a significant one will soon strike us. 
The likelihood that a solar-induced geomagnetic storm may seriously harm our power grids is the main worry when it comes to space weather. Here is how it would operate. The Sun may occasionally release a portion of its outer atmosphere, which is a cloud of rapidly moving charged particles at specific times in its cycles as sunspots form and flares erupt. This coronal mass ejection has the potential to cause a powerful ground current that can pass through power lines, pipelines and telecom cables if it strikes the Earth's magnetic field in precisely the right manner. Electric grids may get overloaded if those currents are sufficiently big, which is exactly what occurred in Quebec in 1989. However, a strong storm could fry a sizable number of high-voltage transformers. Since many of them weigh up to 400 tons and are custom-built with complex supply chains, replacing them can frequently take years. Millions of people may lose power in the interim. Due to its outdated power grid and distinctive geological features, the northeastern United States is one of the regions most at risk. Even 20 major transformers being lost in a storm would be very alarming. Additionally, 40 million people could experience an indefinite power outage in a doomsday scenario. It wouldn't be a good thing. We rely heavily on electricity in modern society and cannot function very well without it. For instance, a 2004 research by Carnegie Mellon University discovered that many Pittsburgh services were horribly equipped for an extended blackout. If the city's electrical pumps couldn't be restored, half the city would run out of water after three days. Gas stations, grocery stores and telephone networks will all be affected. Although emergency rooms would be overloaded if the air conditioning failed during a heat wave, most hospitals have backup systems in place. However, not all is lost. If power utilities got advance notice of a significant solar storm heading their way, they might try to take measures. The Space Weather Prediction Center of the National Weather Service in Boulder, Colorado may identify an approaching event that is about 30 minutes away from striking Earth using current satellites. Operators of the grid would then need to act quickly. However, the extent to which such tactics can be helpful is limited. The one we're really concerned about is extreme space weather, a Carrington-level event, Koza said then. What would happen in that scenario? I would have to tell you that we really don't know. Theoretically, devices like capacitors that may assist stop the flow of ground currents caused by a geomagnetic event could harden the grid and safeguard against more powerful storms. Since the 1989 blackouts, the Canadian government has invested nearly $1.2 billion in these technologies in Quebec. The fact that many of these technologies are expensive and might reduce the current grid's efficiency slightly during normal times is a drawback. The federal government has been paying more attention to the problem in recent years. In 2012, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission issued an order that would eventually force grid operators to plan both operational and technological solutions to a space weather catastrophe. However, utility executives believe that improving grid protection could take some time. The Space Weather Prediction Center of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA, conducts daily assessments of sunspot regions to determine the risks. To determine the likelihood of an Earth-directed solar flare and or CME from an active zone, they track and record changes in sunspot size, number and position. The Heliophysics Systems Observatory HSO, a group of NASA spacecraft, was created to research the Sun and its impact on the solar system, including the results of space weather. These spacecraft include the Parker Solar Probe, which is attempting to touch the Sun, and the Solar Orbiter, operated by the European Space Agency, which is exploring the polar regions of the Sun for the first time. A dedicated mission for forecasting solar weather 
the ESA's vigil mission is scheduled to launch in the middle of 2020. From Lagrange Point 5, which is 93 million miles, 150 million kilometers away from Earth, Vigil will observe the Sun. Space weather, meanwhile, has the potential to wreak all kinds of additional havoc. All the attention is focused on the harmful blackouts. However, solar storms and space weather can also cause a variety of less severe damage. Take air travel. Airlines now operate a variety of commercial flights across the polar regions, such as those connecting Atlanta and Tokyo. However, if the firms receive a geomagnetic storm warning at the last minute from the Space Weather Prediction Center, the planes frequently need to change their courses away from the poles or risk losing radio contact with the Earth. Thousands of dollars may be spent on these diversions. We're continually learning about other things that different kinds of solar weather can potentially interfere with. Communications through satellite can go wrong. Ground currents can cause pipelines to corrode. Threats exist for human spaceflight as well. When leaving the Earth's magnetic field, radiation becomes a major problem for spaceflight. Bursts of solar radiation, which can have negative effects on health, can be particularly dangerous for astronauts working outside the Earth's protective shield. This means that we would require a greater understanding of space weather if we ever took seriously the idea of, say, visiting Mars. And there are still lots of unanswered questions, like the possible effect of solar eruptions on GPS technology. Even solar storms have the potential to deteriorate the signal as it travels from the satellite to the ground. The modern economy depends so heavily on GPS, from navigation to geophysical investigation by oil and gas corporations, that any tampering with its signals could have serious financial repercussions. More satellites might be useful in tracking these storms. It's unknown what we need to prepare for, which is a major issue when it comes to space weather preparation. Storms and minor impacts happen frequently. But when might a Carrington event occur? Or maybe a storm like the one that hit Quebec in 1989? According to scientists, there is a 12% possibility that an event of the Carrington intensity would strike Earth within the next three to four years. Undoubtedly, that is a figure we would like to determine. Scientists in space are still learning a lot of new things. For example, it's still difficult to forecast whether an Earth-bound solar outburst will actually cause a storm. A coronal mass ejection's interaction with other solar winds as it approaches Earth will determine a lot of things. It is comparable to being aware of the impending arrival of a hurricane, but being unable to gauge its barometric pressure. According to experts in space weather, it would be beneficial to have more spacecraft studying the sun in order to provide us with more advance notice of storms and protect us from their dangers. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.